I'm glad to get to speak on the Personal Injuries Resolution Board Bill and I'm glad, very glad to see its focus um, on mediation and the emphasis on mediation which of course reduces stress, reduces cost uh, and helps manage a process better overall. Um, many, many deputies obviously have spoken directly on the bill and I'd just like to speak on a related matter in relation to litigation and that is the CNAG's report published last Friday on the management, on, on the accounts of the public service 2021 but specifically chapter 20 on the management of the clinical indemnity scheme. And I want to just explain, explain something, declare something first, which is a, a personal interest in the management of it. This was, this was a subject that was considered with the State Claims Agency in the Public Accounts Committee some many months ago, um, and where uh, deputies were investigating, you know, challenging the State Claims Agency, not just on their funds that they expend in relation to litigation, the overall awards, the management of that on behalf of the state and the management of the, of the ongoing risk to the state. So it's, very, it's a very considerable liability, as you're aware. And uh, one of the challenges, and, and one of the challenges is um, obviously uh, reducing risk uh, even further in hospitals so that there are fewer cases for the state, but much more importantly, so that there are fewer incidents for, in people's lives. One of the... Um, one of the, I, 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 as I said to the last Ken Corla on coming in, as, as I said to the clerk of the Public Accounts Committee and the chair of the Public Accounts Committee, I have my own uh, experience in it. In, in it. Um, one of the key ex pieces of exposure to the state is that of catastrophic birth injuries and birth injuries and maternity injuries more generally. And I do obviously have an active case in relation to that with the state, so I just wish to, to, to declare that. But it obviously gives a better understanding of some of the challenges. And one of the key things from the from the report of the uh, from the CNAG's report of last week is around what's known as the National in Incident Management System. And so, if something happens in a hospital, and obviously the most the most costly and the most um, devastating injuries are those injuries that happen in maternity hospitals uh, in in real terms, both to the, the woman and I think uh, Dr. Croden, Croden has referred to psychological injuries, but also to, um, to phys physically to, to to babies in those situations. And obviously the exposure to the state can be very large. But what we were concerned about was, well, we keep seeing these pattern of cases, whether it's, birth in, whether it's um, brain injuries, whether it's uh, cerebral palsy. And what is, what is the state claims agency doing in, terms, uh, in holding the uh, hospitals to account? Where are the patterns? How many, are, are certain hospitals more problematic than others? Don't you recall that uh, Peter Boylan did a very good report in 2016 on maternal deaths and injuries in, uh, around the state, uh, focusing on Port Leash and other hospitals, but really getting into, well, what's going on and how do you make sure that that doesn't happen again? There are so many cases of birth injuries. There are so many cases of deaths um, that happen. And it is so frustrating to be a parent who is part of that community and to see this come up again and again and again in the same hospitals. And you sort of wonder, God, is, you know, is, is nothing ever changing? So our challenge, I suppose, to the State Claims Agency was, well, what are you doing in relation to the National Incident Management System? How are you interrogating that? And I think actually the, the, you know, the CNAG has done a brilliant response to that. So he analysed the, uh, the National um, Incident Management Service. And so he said, overall, in the period of 2017 to 2021, only 25% of claims had received to the State Claims Agency had previously been reported uh, as incidents on the National Incident Management System. Of the 75% of claims pre not reported, the State Claim, you know, we, we concluded that in 22% of cases there was insufficient information available to determine whether it should have been reported. Um, in 21% of cases, it was reasonable for the incident to giving rise to the claim to have been recorded. And in about 32% of cases, they wouldn't have been aware of it. So it's clear that there was a, you know, at least a fifth of those cases that ultimately became litigation cases for the state that should have been recorded. Uh, and of that, I mean, it is only when hospital management is put under pressure in relation to their responses that you, apt, that you have the opportunity to change things culturally. Um, we challenged the scale of the cerebral palsy injuries. I mean, like if you, when you go through the report, 60% of the claims with the state claims agency now arise from maternity cases. 60% of the state's liability arises from maternity cases, arises from maternity hospitals. But the, and that's, that's fine, we say that as a member of the Public Accounts Committee and, 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 and holding that to account more broadly. From the personal perspective, every single one of those cases is life-altering for the, for the baby and for the family. Every single one of them, and every deputy in here knows a case of that kind. And every single one of those families who have to litigate that claim 
don't want to do it. Don't ever want to be in that situation. Don't ever want to have to go through that process of having report after report after report done on their child just to try to reach a balance where they can make sure that they can fund the child's life, the child's very altered life, as a consequence of the injury. So 60% of the claims um, come from maternity. And of that, the, of, the, the, of the cerebral palsy case, cases, that represents 1.4 billion of the 3.4 billion liability, or 41% of, of the overall claims. At the end of 2021, there are 163 active cerebral palsy claims related to maternity services, and it takes longer to finalise those claims, the, um, uh, up to about five years, which is all five years' worth of stress, as you can imagine. So the sooner the state claims agency move en masse to that mediated system, which is re referred to, which is you know, a central part of this bill that we're discussing today, um, the better. Of course, they have to go through the appropriate due diligence, but still, mediation is, is always a better system. In 2021, there were 335 active cases relating to catastrophic injury, with an estimated outstanding liability of 2.4 of billion. The average liability per catastrophic injury claim is 7.2 million, compared to 300,000 for other clinical negligence claims. So it's you know it, it is not it's not good reading. It's certainly not good reading when you, when you know it a bit more intimately. But it does it is it is the basis for, from which I think we can start to hold the hospital boards more accountable for what happens within their hospitals. It's just a, that we were told by the state claims agency in the PAC meeting that there's about 26 cases of cerebral palsy every year and that that was about average uh, internationally. And I know they didn't mean it in a heartless way when they said that, but that's 26 families, that's 26 children. And if it could be reduced even by a, a small number, if, if, it's, if for some reason some of them are unavoidable, but, but we know that that's not so. We know that there are so many cases where there have been mistake after mistake after mistake. And crucially, and if I might say in the last 10 seconds, more often than not, women simply not being listened to, of all things, in a maternity hospital more than anywhere else, simply not being listened to. And that number from 26 simply has to come down, not just from the perspective of the liability of the state, but for each and every one of those families and, and, the, and their children. Thank you, Laskin Corlin.